so welcome to the deaf by podcast podcast do we get is that what we're going with here you know now that i actually say it it sounds a bit yeah off, but it does sound a bit <laughs> off uh whatever uh, uh, we'll figure out something we'll figure welcome out. to death work. by podcast just for all you goth social oh wait no wrong podcast never mind damn uh <laughs> Oh, I guess, well, shit. Another thing I forgot to go over is, uh, I'm cool with first names. Are you cool with that? I don't, last names, nah, but first names I'm all right with. You do know you do call me by my last name. What? 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 We've but, been over this before. But, 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 who? What? What's her first name? My first name is Caleb. That's right. Oh my god! Yes, you you, you knew that. I, I I did know that, but then I forgot. Then I knew it again. Damn. Uh. Sh- oh wow, human memory. It's amazing how it doesn't work. Wow, you're right. I am getting old. So dang. What? Well, I'm just gonna go by Evan because calling me my last name is very fucking awkward. What are you, uh... I mean, you just keep calling me what you keep calling me. Wow! Okay, I guess I have... Uh, you know, that's all right. All right, all right. I uh, it seem like you overcomplicated that. Uh, maybe, maybe. I was just thinking about it. Man, you know, I don't want to dox ourselves, you know? Jeez. I don't think that's possible. I think that's very possible. I already have a fan club. I don't want them coming to my house. Uh huh, fan club. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, stalkers, but still. <laughs> well, I mean, they still have to be real, not just horrible, nightmarish figures of your imagination. Well, minus the imagination part, you are right. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, gosh. <laughs> so what is it? What's the first thing you want to talk about? Well, we talk about. Well, we're just going to edit all this part out or use clips of it for the opening. But um, anyway, so welcome to the Def By Podcast. I'm Evan PSO, as I'm also known on the rest of the internet. And I got my buddy Tristan, random username changes every week. Whoa, whoa. Right now, it is Azathoth, Devourer of WAP. So, oh, you know. yes. Well, I appreciate both of those references, but... Do you? Mm, yes, actually. Okay. Oh, oh, good. Anyway, this is going to be our, I guess, gaming, not culture, but kind of podcast. What? I mean, we're going to talk about video games, tabletop stuff, d- random dumb shit that comes to mind. I mean, would you call it just a gaming culture, gaming, whatever podcast? What would you call it? It will about be... It will be about gaming <laughs> culture. Yes. Yes. It yes. will. Mm. I mean, it's going to be very generalized, going mostly into you know our interests. Specifically, mm. I think it would be uh, board games, a lot of <laughs> video tabletop. games. Yeah, a lot of tabletop stuff. Yes. Which we could get Gamers. more. Uh, those are like tabletop actual RPGs, but you know, no, shit happens. No. <laughs> RPGs are canceled. I'm sorry. They are canceled. But... <laughs> So anyway, I guess a little bit of uh, background and introduction for us. Uh, I've been playing video games and tabletop stuff since, God, early, mid-90s. Video game side of things, I had a Sega Genesis, the computer, uh, played both of those. SNES was kind of right about the era I grew up with, but I didn't have one, so like outside of friends or daycares that had them i didn't really play a ton of stuff on them uh video games outside of that later got into all kinds of stuff tactic games rpgs shooters all of it from basically the 90s all the way up till the present uh not big on mmos i had a couple i really liked like uh star wars galaxies etc those were great um i never got to play that Oh, so back in the day, man, it was so good. Even when people bitch about the update, man, that game was good. We'll, we'll do an MMO uh, episode did. maybe at some point. Yeah, well, that's a short line of experience for me. I never got <laughs> into 
I never got into WoW or anything like that. I guess I tried to once, but then I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, uh, yeah, I never... Sorry to all you know. WoW fans out there, but man, it, it was never good. I'm sorry. It was never yeah, good. I, well, I don't know. Well, anyway, a little bit more about me then. Um, God, I guess it was like six, seven. My first ever like console was given to me by my grandfather. It was an N64. I do remember that, you know, for some reason or another, I wanted and like SNES, but he actually got me a 64 instead. I never did understand why he did that, but I guess I'm happy he did. <laughs> uh, Yeah, let's see. I guess the first game that I even remember playing was like Yoshi Story. Like I played the shit out of that trying to just unlock all the fucking color Yoshis. <laughs> Like, and I guess I've just always been, like, a Nintendo fanboy most of my childhood. Like, the only consoles I really owned until I was, like, a teenager, like, 13, was always an SNES, N64, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Super Game Boy. You know, it's... I always had Nintendo products actually for the longest time outside like the Dreamcast. Yeah. Uh, God, what was I guess 360 was the first time outside the Dreamcast I had something that wasn't yeah. a Nintendo product. But yeah, uh, yeah, PC's and, been uh, the only constant one for me though. I didn't get into PC gaming until like middle school, and I yeah, yeah, but it was mostly for other stuff. Like I played stuff on the ps1 because that's what my cousin had he had a ps1 and he later would have the ps2 and for some reason or another i never owned a ps2 i had an xbox but i don't know it wasn't until like randomly in high school is when i got a ps3 and i never actually played it until actually i graduated high school really yeah, I remember now. I got it so sophomore year in high school, and I didn't actually become like dedicated to actually playing video games and stuff like that until, well, at least console gaming until like after high school. All of middle school and like half of high school, I was such a fucking weeb. I played just <laughs> stupid ass Asian MMOs, Maple Story, some other oh, shit, no. like a bunch of like closed beta to a bunch of other 2D or like MMO RPGs like Jesus like you think wow it's pathetic this is this is the uh, let's not talk about that it was literally me just coming home either playing like shitty MMOs or just doing stuff on like melee I'm not sure why hell most of the time especially say early uh, I guess 2000 2001 era was like Dreamcast, Fancy Star Online, hence the nickname. Uh, GameCube version of Fancy Star Online. Never played the PC version actually till much, much further in the future. Uh, outside of that, I guess Game Boy games like Pokemon games, etc. Like that was actually one of the first uh, one of the first games I ever purchased with my own money was I bought a copy of Pokemon Blue when it came out. Like the week it came out in the U.S. Um, yeah. Like, the only one I ever truly played in which I actually did catch them all was the original Gold. I think that one that came out, too. Yeah, that was... <laughs> God, maybe I spent more time playing that than Blue? I'm not sure. Yeah. But... Yeah, yeah so I, I literally know. played that until it stopped working. <laughs> uh, I, never that bad, but I'm sure all the batteries in my... My copies are all dead by now. <laughs> and the thing is, is that I got gold, but I actually did get silver too, but I just like, well, I like silver more, so I ended up stopping playing gold and doing silver. But I had yeah. both at some alternating point. Well, I think I stopped uh, playing gold when, uh, what was the, uh, what was the first time they, well, not the first time, but what was the combination of the two? Crystal? Was that the combination? Yeah, one? yeah, that was Crystal. I never did yeah. really play Crystal. That that one I played like a ton. That was. I mean, I great. rented it and stuff, but you know. Wait, rented how... Game Boy games? What? Yeah, you remember you could rent Game Boy games. 
I Best literally of... never saw Game Boy games at like any rental place I went to. What? Really? The blockbuster yeah. like right down the street from my house, you could rent Game Boy games. Yeah, what that's how f- I like played Mario and Luigi um, Superstar what? Saga. They Shit. had it for rent there. Dang, I no. That's fucking awesome game. I, I swear, like every I went to rental places up till the end of the uh or beginning of the Game Boy Advance era, and I literally never saw Game Boy games at any place. Yeah. But um so Basically, after high school, you know, I didn't really do anything. I wasn't even in school or anything else. I kind of just... That's where, basically, I discovered, like, actual tabletop RPGs. Like, I actually started going to game stores and stuff. And that's mostly because, um, at essentially, the very last few weeks of high school is when... I found some friends that were actually into magic and bought starter decks and all this other stuff. And we went to like F and M's together. So magic is how I kind of started getting in there. Um, and then the D and D group that I was a part of, we were doing fourth edition, got the DM a few times. That was actually because of my friend too, because she was, well, she's not my friend anymore, so I can only assume that she's still a Buddhist. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, well, yeah. She, she, she was Buddhist anyway. Mm-mm. It was her actual, like, sort of um, Buddhist group because they um were in that same community together. So I would like hang out with them, do board games with them and stuff, and that's kind of how I started getting more and more into it. And I guess I realized that's been like ten years now does fly by, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, it does. I mean, as far as tabletop games for me go, uh, two little games. Dad used to be big, 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 big into um, RC cars, planes, boats, etc. Uh, also, the latest fads, he had like a bunch of uh, whatever freaking Activision console back in the day, and uh, Sega Genesis is how I actually got the one i played was his technically um but outside that he went to his hobby shop up in carrollton given a little bit of location away there but and i remember going with him one day and there was all these guys at like a bunch of different tables and they were moving all these little 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 army man looking dudes to me anyway at the time (laughs) around and rolling dice and consulting charts and stuff and i was like whoa that's cool what is this you know, and I was like, oh, it's a miniature war game. I'm like, oh, okay, that's really neat. Yeah, you know, I didn't think too much of it. Um, ended up, not too long after that, ended up at a game shop for some reason. I guess I just bugged my parents to stop or whatever. And there was a bunch of people opening Magic the Gathering packs. And this would have been, oh, I guess Fallen Empires-ish around that time? Maybe, yeah, somewhere around there. I, I distinctly remember Fallen Empire cards. I was like, oh, Best that's... way to be introduced to magic. <laughs> yes, fallen empires. So, you know, I was like, oh, hey, you know, what's this? And talked to them a bit, and they gave me a bunch of cards. And, well, that's how I got into magic. But after that, it was just kind of different things here and there. And I'd had some experience with the universe with MechWarrior 2, but back in 99, 2000, I got into Battletech. I literally found a random copy of a Battletech novel at this old bookstore in my neighborhood. Read it. It was the greatest thing I'd ever read as far as like a pulp sci-fi novel goes. And I just became enamored. I picked up all the books from a uh, half price, uh, got my friend groups to run like RPGs and stuff, had minis but didn't really have anybody to actually play the actual tabletop game with. I actually, in fact, played MechWarrior Dark Age, the click game by WizKids, before I played uh, actual Battletech tabletop. And yeah, I've just been playing that for freaking 20-something years now at this point. Uh, Outside of that, Pokemon, when it came out, like, woof, I was one of the first kids to get first edition, actual first edition Pokemon cards. Uh, Somehow protected all that without any of it getting stolen or torn up back in the day, somehow. You uh, see, I had Pokemon cards too, but and everybody had them too, but we never learned to play the game. I didn't actually learn to play the game until I played like the actual, like the Game Boy edition of it. 
See, that's crazy because I I love collecting them, but I like aggressively went to tournaments when they had them at like Toys R Us for the people who remember Toys R Us used to have like events back in the day. They have like oh, giant bins full of card Toys packs. Toys R Us in general. <laughs> well, yes, but yeah, I'm, we've established I'm old. Uh, so, you know, it was just like, I loved playing it. Like, I didn't. I would say Magic was the one I didn't play competitively for like a very long time. Like I didn't play another card game really competitively till um, Yu-Gi-Oh came out, which oh, that's a whole freaking. <laughs> yeah, so I mean Yu-Gi-Oh. I I guess I I did play tournaments with Yu-Gi-Oh. Now that I actually remember it and everything, and I guess that was a lot of stuff I did in high school. Or, no, it wasn't high school. I guess I did play a little bit in high school, but no, that was mostly elementary school. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you whippersnappers. Yeah, I played... I just remember when, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! came out, right? Like, I remember the first couple episodes, I watched it. Well, no, I didn't watch it. I heard about it. I had heard about it from, like, neighborhood kids. I was like, that's dumb. That will never replace Pokemans. And then I watched a couple episodes, was like, holy shit, this is dumb, but I love it. And <laughs> you so you couldn't get the structure decks, right? Like, when they first came out, they only had the Kaiba and Yugi structure decks. Couldn't find them. Completely sold out. I went to New Mexico with my mother for, like, a weird kind of, like, business trip thing, which is a very long story. And there was a guy at New Mexico State Fair who had them. Like, $10 markup, which is crazy when you think about the markups people are doing these days on uh, card state game stuff fair. yeah the state fair for new mexico he was just at like he had a booth he did sports cards mostly i believe so he had sports cards some magic and he had just just had a kaiba and yuki deck and i was like hey that's the one item i want on this trip as a souvenir <laughs> and my mom was nice enough to get them for me I was the coolest motherfucker in the neighborhood. <laughs> I might have to bleep that one. I don't know how how a PG thirteen we want this. I get one, right? But we all get one. Okay. But so anyway, so I had that stuff, and I was the coolest damn kid. I, I read the rule book back and forth, played the sh played the hell out of it. I got the um the first game was it Game Boy Color Yu Gi Oh card game. I got that. I don't, I don't remember. With, I know I did play a PlayStation Two one. Oh, this was like I said. This was like the first Yu Gi Oh game. I had the promos and everything. I still probably do have them somewhere. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Which that's back when promos were banned. Like, oh god. <laughs> but yeah, so I started with that. Like, did really good too. I, I was the hottest kid at the tournament. I was the best at my local scene. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I don't know. I, like I said, I played that for a while until I just got fed up with cards getting a billion freaking words of text. Like, you had to get a magnifying out to read them, and rules interactions getting super wonky, and the banning list going up and down constantly, which, I don't know, it was when Injection Fairy Lily came out? I don't remember, somewhere around that time. And I was just like, oh, I'm done with this, and I quit. I just went back to Magic. Yeah, I mean... There was at one point where I realized I was just not having fun with the game anymore, and that was like sophomore year of high school, where it's like I was just done with it completely. And I don't know, I felt like it was just, I just outgrew the game. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people have that feeling. Like I said, I got, I just got fed up with like I said, all the rules stuff really was like the big one that irritated me was I was like, I don't want to have to know a billion different interactions and constantly have to be update on like these banned lists and restricted lists and everything outside of, you know, every once in a while, because it was fluctuating a lot around those couple sets. Like every freaking week, Konami would just be like, hey, we're, we're changing stuff. Like, um... Which is I ironic, see, because I... then I immediately played miniature games, and it's all about knowing the arena <laughs> and the latest up-to-date stuff, but then I couldn't, as a kid, I hated that, so I did not freaking want to be involved with it at all. Yeah, that's, not, I mean, I didn't even learn anything about ban lists and all the other stuff until I was out of high school when I started going to tournaments for Magic, and 
because uh, as a kid, I didn't care about any of the other stuff. Like, if there was a ban list or whatever, I'm pretty sure it wasn't even a force at the one store in which we play tournaments at, so, eh. Ah, uh, the good old days of <laughs> not actually yeah. caring about any of that. Yeah, that was that was definitely my experience early Yu -Gi very early Yu Gi Oh, very early Pokemon. Uh, Magic had already kind of been established at that point, but I didn't really play it competitively yeah. at that point. Well, I mean, like, when, okay, so when I went to the first Magic tournament, which I know where it is, but I guess I I just won't say the name. The one in Richardson, but anyway, um. At the time, they had released special, like, sort of decks that were replicas of, like, an online magic thing that they were doing. Oh, so, yeah, I remember those. So, like, the Liliana deck was centered around Discard and, like, the Eviscerator or whatever and, like, Ravenous Rats. So I took, like, one or two of those decks to there and was just playing them and just switching out between rounds too and i didn't know i could do that i didn't even know the decks weren't even <laughs> legal like why would you release something like that and i can't just play them in these tournaments Who does that? coast has never done that nope never happens and so it's like and so my friend what she did is that she just bought a random starter deck and and she was good i wasn't which doesn't matter because, I mean, I lost every single round anyway. <laughs> but yeah, that's what happened with stuff with Magic. Um, board game, I guess that just happened from me, you know, essentially going in there, playing Magic, scrubbing out, and then like, well, fuck it, I'm losing. Guess I'll do something else. That's essentially what happened. That's kind of how I got into board games, which was, it, it also had to do with the D&D &D group and all this other stuff. But, you know, I found that I really liked playing that stuff. So I kind of just got more and more into just trying to find board games to play. Just Feel ordering fun. around stores. Yeah, that's kind of how it ended up with me. I got, uh, like I said, I kind of got tired of Yu-Gi-Oh! I'd playing... Oh, that would have been still Mechware Dark Age was a thing briefly till they pissed everybody off with the uh, game change to, uh, was Age of Destruction? Yeah, Age of Destruction. But yeah, I was picking up board games and miniature games too at that point. I remember when like some of the first War Machine stuff was on shelves. I remember seeing it and being like, oh, that's kind of neat, but I, I'm on an I'm allowance slash job kind of situation, so I don't have the money for this. And I didn't pick it up at the time, which would change later. But yeah, I pretty much like sold or quit all my card game stuff. Uh, the occasional RPG with my friends. And then when I moved out to Fort Worth, uh, love, God, a long time ago still. No, well, it wasn't that long, I guess. But moved out there, I ran into the uh, shout to the DFW Mech Warriors Guild, which is my local Battletech crew. Uh, I saw an advertisement on the Battletech forums. They were like, hey, you know, come on over if you want to play some Battletech. Here's our house rules, whatever. Just show up, have a good attitude, and have some dice. So I, I showed up with, like, a raggedy tag, just random mechs I'd bought from, like, Lone Star Comics when that was a thing. <laughs> and yeah. I just, like, showed up, and, like, literally one of the first things that happened is we had this situation come up with like this hover vehicle, like, you know, how could it get across like this elevated terrain and everything? And I just looked at him like, well, you dukes a hazard it, you know, make a piloting check. You dukes a hazard it. If you fail, well, that sucks. No, like we like you, you're going to fit right in. <laughs> and then I became a part of that. Uh, I came part of that Baltic crew, like, like forever now at this point, geez. But outside of that, I played, uh, what did I play on there? I played Pirates of Spanish Main by WizKids, which was a fun little just bullshit random hobby game. It was a lot of fun. Um, and then I met a couple people who played War Machine Hordes at that time because it kind of got big. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, can I play a Battle Box game with you because I want to see about this? They're like, oh, okay. You know, played it, lost like 20 freaking games in a row, but, you know, had a ball. And I started picking up stuff for that, and I played that for a very long time around that era yeah um 
I'm trying to, I guess it was Greg, yeah, who got me into, like, miniatures because I always wanted to do them, and he let me use his, and all we did was just play 40k, the skirmish one, which for some reason the name eludes me. Kill Team, there you go, I kill did team. it. Kill Team, yeah. Yeah, it was, and it was the kill team done by the original, like, Heralds. Mm -hmm. So that's that. That's how I kind of just slowly got into there and, you know, learned after just learning about it, all the stuff in general, kind of just, uh, I guess, forgotten about uh, Warhammer. I mean, I still do play it, but, you know, it's oh, more like being being held captive at this point. <laughs> yeah, the Stockholm Syndrome be strong with uh, Warhammer players. No offense, guys, but it's true. You know it in your heart. Uh, I actually did forget about that. Is I did technically... I don't know if it was Warhammer or it was a World War II game at that hobby shop back in the 90s, but I did have oh, a crew... I, <laughs> right? I had a crew I played with where I played 2nd and 3rd edition. Uh, I believe 3rd edition had come out already, but the crew was like, no, we don't like that. We're playing 2nd edition. So I played Orcs for that, and then when they finally migrated to 3rd edition, I picked up uh, Space Marines. Just kind of hodgepodge bits people gave me, and like occasional box set from my parents at that era. But that was kind of my background, 40k for a bit, and I kind of dropped off 3rd edition. I picked up Space Marines, like I said, and rolled with those. But then I was just like, eh, I don't like this game. And like I said, I focused more on card games up till I... Uh, picked up Macquarie Dark Age and uh, Classic Battletech and War Machine. Yeah, um, I mean, I think I told you before, but my first faction was Craft World, the Craft World, you know, Eldar. And then mm. after that, it was. I always did want to do Chaos, and that's just how I got into Death Guard because out of all the Chaos Legions, that's the one that I liked the most, you know. I was, always a, I was always a Thousand Suns kind of guy. That was kind of the army I wanted to start. But uh, I believe the mm -hmm. Thousand Suns Space Marine box set was new at the time. And it was like, it was up there in like expense. It was like one of the expensive box sets. So I never, I just went like generic Space Marines because I could get bits from people. But I always loved them. They were always my kind of chaos Marine chapter of choice. Well, I guess I, that would, I guess that would make a little bit of sense. I mean, I I liked their lore and I like the whole design that they have with Zinch. You know, they were doomed by their own accession. In addition to being, you know, I, well, not appreciated also for their whole being psyker things, and kind of fell to their own sort of like assassin and pursuit of knowledge, which, you know, makes sense with Zinch as well, all that other stuff and jazz. But it just seemed like all the lore just seemed very trite to me when it concerned like Thousand Sons. So I kind of was like, eh, I like Death Guard more. Well, that's... <laughs> it... I would say it hasn't always been that way for pretty much anybody, really, in 40k, if you really want to break them down. But... For you, it would be, I guess, newer Thousand Suns, which I was kind of glad they actually kind of got some of their own stuff at that point. But, eh, meh. I kind of preferred it when you had, like, a character and then just, like, the generic Chaos Selectors for them, you know? Like, being able to kind of craft your own thing was okay, and then they, they started doing, like, well, here's all this unique stuff for them, and honestly, eh? Like, I would have just oh, preferred the just... models and use generic rules, you know? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, like, every every single codex needs to have, like, different, I I don't know, I guess. Well, you came into that. Sub-factions yeah. within it, I mean. Yeah, well, you came into the era of sub-factions in 40k, though. Like, that was, there was some of that, but barely any. Like, you had one or two model choices, typically, a character possibly being one of those. Well, no, and it was. That, that was what you had when I started. Like you, you should have gotten right in there when they started doing sub factions, like you said, like Plague Marines, Thousand Suns, Corn, like all that. Well, it, well, not just like the sub factions like that. I'm talking about like just like during the Craft World, you have to like announce what Craft World that you're. A part oh yeah, of, and yeah. You get some army right rules, like yeah. 
like even like the Harlequins, you need to announce what mask you're part of. It's like why yeah. does every every single codex do this? Just like they actually have play companies finally. Oh yeah, they they that that's just something they started doing around that era. Like I said, is it, it was more of you back in the day. Dun dun dun! You're gonna hear that phrase a lot. That was just you know, like I said, you had one or two model choices and modeling and organization was kind of how you actually demonstrated that, right? Like. It wasn't just actually like, you know, you have to pick this thing and do the thing and then oh here's your sub faction codex and all that stuff. Like Yeah, I, you know, I, let's just not talk about hoarding. <laughs> <laughs> oh we we're gonna have an episode about it because oh boy, I'm gonna love bitching yeah, about it. I okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess somebody has to put a positive light on what Whatever it is they're trying to do now, I don't know what. It is. Uh, I mean, they 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 are paying plenty of people to do that. I'm pretty sure for the marketing, so it's okay. We can they be the have negative marketing? side. I haven't seen any marketing for this fucking game. Oh, they do. It's uh, yeah. You have to check out some of the 40k YouTubers. Don't don't check out the 40k YouTubers. No offense. Go, but. Okay, well, I guess that is, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess that is marketing. It's just that, you know, I'm so used to, I mean, as like a sort of like marketing student, I keep forgetting that like, there's so many progressive, non-traditional forms of digital marketing that it, it just, I, I forget that YouTube <laughs> is its own special thing. Yep. Well... And, I don't know, so kind of let wrap up the history section, I guess. The later half after that point, for me anyway, would be I played Battletech for a while. I also picked up Star Wars Ventures, not the fancy flight, current fancy flight one, but the Wizards of the Coast one, which, eh, bounced things aside, was actually a fun little cheap collectible game that was like a lot of fun to play. Uh, I, besides that, I picked up War Machine, I picked up Star Wars Miniatures, kept playing Battletech, uh, that continued for a while. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think around that era is when... Do you remember... Do we meet at Gunslinger first? Rest in peace? Yes. We should have. Okay, yeah. Cause... I, I believe what happened is, is that you were at Gunslinger, like, a lot. Oh, yeah. We never actually spoke in there. Mm. It wasn't until that place shut down and mm. they opened in Richardson that we actually mm. really started talking to each other, if I remember correctly. I think that's right. Because you used to, you did actually hang out with uh, <laughs> our two uh, compatriots we won't talk about unless they come on the show. Uh, you used to hang out with them, right? Yeah. And okay. then also other, other friends at the time and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I... I saw. I I think I vaguely remember you playing more along the lines of probably was BattleTech or Warhammer at the time, or not not War Machine. There you go. Yeah, it would have been War Machine, not Gunslinger, because that was the biggest uh, outside the Magic crew. That was like the biggest crew over there. Yeah, I just remember seeing you playing um, miniatures and stuff there. Never yeah. anything that has to do with like board games or MTG or whatever. Yeah. Well, the occasional magic game, just to troll Vincent and then rest in peace, man. Dang, we've lost so many people. Um, yeah, just to troll them or... Yeah, usually it's just War Machine Hordes because that's what I played because the history was... Uh, oh, God, what was the name of that store? X-Max Games? X-Max Games. And then the two owners of Gunslinger uh, used to work there, formed their own game store... I went over there with a buddy who I used to play War Machine Hordes with and used to hang out a lot, which I need to get in contact with him again. And, yeah, just played War Machine Hordes there for Gunslinger's whole life, really. Uh, but, yeah. anyway, so did that. Like, I guess we were kind of... I guess the second move, I want to say, when Gunslinger got its second location is about when... Uh, is that when we started interacting? Or I guess was it the Richardson era? Well... No, I'm pretty sure it's when they shut down completely for good. Yeah, so, yeah, the third it's when location. It's when, yeah, what was the third location? Because I'm pretty sure it was starting that was in, when it was... That was in Richardson next to the Shadowland Gaming Center. Okay, yeah, that's <laughs> definitely what I was thinking about. Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah, so that, that checks out, because we weren't playing as much War Machine Hordes, but the the kind of little loser's club of all of us were playing just board games and card games and stuff at that time, so yeah, yeah, that checks out. But yeah. anyway, so we went from there up to our local haunt, Madness Games, check them out, they're pretty great. Um, most of the time, anyway. <laughs> we'll get into my issues with them at some point, maybe. Um, so, yeah, so we kind of migrated there. Uh, unfortunately, on, so as far as my gaming stuff goes, uh, War Machine Hordes went through a third edition. A lot of our TOs and stuff either moved away, had to quit for personal reasons, and, well, outside of that, I think there's, like, only one or two stores that have, like, dedicated groups now in the DFW when we had a lot before several world champions too um so that kind of like killed that for me so we just kind of kept playing boards and card games really and uh, we all kind of used to meet up at madness quite a bit till uh you know the pandemic happened yeah uh, only now recently getting back out to it but yeah outside that it's just been <laughs> the usual games like i said a lot of online gaming recently and we both have been real into uh Apex Legends, other battle royales, mostly Apex for both of us. Uh, I play Modern Warfare with uh, a crew occasionally. Yeah, I don't know. I I can never get into like Call of Duty. Like ever since I played it a couple of times for the PS2, and then I stopped caring. <laughs> I always I always loved the the first one, the World War Two one. I loved to death. I used to be a private server i used to be on like all the time for the original call of duty on pc um i don't really actually I like mean, a lot that's, of that's showing like both of our ages right there we remember mm -hmm. call of duty used to be a world war ii game it like, used to yes. be a world war ii game and it was it dope. was remember it, medal of honor 2 you, no. you remember medal of honor allied assault yes i do because that game was also dope and i played on private server um but yeah i don't know as far as their design goes for modern warfare i just like, there's a lot of... Everybody makes the joke, and they're right. It's become, like, the Madden-style thing where you just slap a new date on it, and you roll with it. Sometimes well, there's improvements, course. sometimes there's a step back, but at the end of the day, the core gameplay doesn't change, and they're not willing to take any real risk on it. Well, it's not just simply the core gameplay. It's it's all of the little nuances that just, you know, makes FPSs, like, so different nowadays. Like, the feel of the character, the weight, the physics, all that other stuff. It's not just simply them keeping the same mechanics. It's the fact that they just keep, keep chucking out the same goddamn engine, too. It's like, Jesus Christ, people. Yeah, that does kind of show up in all the issues frickin' Warzone has, but that's a, uh... That would be a fun episode to discuss. Well, when we ever hit up shooters or battle royales or both, we we'll, might have something fun to talk about with, when it comes to that. But, yeah, so like I said, outside of that, it's been mostly Apex, the occasional single player, whatever flavor of the month game on my end. Uh, uh, I mean, I haven't had much time to do any gaming, like, lately with those concerns. I mean... <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think. What did I even do this year that I'm trying to? I would honestly have to go back and actually look it up. That's that's actually I mean, kind of sad. I know I haven't finished Control, and I've been meaning to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's and it's just so hard with these single player things. And I know the <laughs> one thing I did finish that I even that I just remember is Hades, and I finished that. It mm -hmm. took about twenty hours. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm having the same issues I find. Uh, I don't know if it's just getting older or what, but like I have a billion games in my Steam library and god, I need to finish a bunch of them that are on the list. But outside that, no, I kind of just go back to like random multiplayer games. And honestly, this year, I mean, the biggest game we've played really has been Apex. That's like been our big thing this year. Played some Divinity 2, which we need to get back Disco to. Disco Elysium. That was amazing. Disco Elysium. I need to play that. I need to play that. That was I've, an amazing game. I have avoided like everything I can about it. I know the bare basics. Uh, I know like some of like the Chapo Trap House guys' involvement with it, uh, but I've avoided pretty much anything I can about that uh, uh, game. I, I to, did finish the, Trials of Mana. The the complete edition's out, right? For uh, Disco Elysium. Yeah, yeah, the final mm. cut. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll have to pick that up. Probably be on sale during the Steam Summer Sale. I'll pick up a copy and yeah, try to make me. myself sit down to play it. No, it took me 30 hours to finish Hades. Yeah, no, that's not. And the other thing I, I guess I've been playing was also like Rogue Company. It's mostly just been those like, I'm not sure what it is or how it happened. Is that. It went for me, like, especially, like, immediately after high school, I went, like, used my PS3 and just went back and revisited a lot of, like, PS1 and 2 classic RPGs, like Legends of Dragoon, all that sort of jazz. And now that I'm trying to actually have a freaking career and trying to do college and all this other stuff, I don't have time to be doing into something that I know is just a complete... I like dedication to all this other stuff i i guess i just like the whole like immediate fast sort of like core gameplay loop when it's just down to that thing and there isn't just so much else going on like i like the little stories that come up in apex i i like how the game feels and it's just the characters are nice and like like i said the little comics that they release it's just a right amount of like investment in there for story for me and even then when i go for stories i try to go for things that are a lot more i guess passive that i can have in the background while i do other stuff that's why even when i like go on netflix and hulu it's like i think i've seen the entirety of american dad like how many times like a <laughs> times, like oh it's no sad Oof. And 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 that's the other thing about it is that you know I I've, I've been feeling so stressed lately like I can't just sit down there and watch some super like I want to watch the stupid Jupiter's Legacy <laughs> but Jesus Christ some, another dark gritty superhero thing it seems like it's good but I really really just want to watch this animated series about home with this shitty DreamWorks movie because it's funny. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't like I said. I don't, maybe there's just something about that. Just having to be an adult, you know. I mean, I pit forty, fifty hours every week myself when it comes to work, and it's just like I get home and I'm like, okay, I'm going to glue two pieces of this terrain together, and then I'm going to do whatever my dailies are in some gotcha game I'm playing at the moment, and I'm going to bed, and then get up. Literally the exact same thing in the morning. Pit, glue two things together. Do dailies if I got them. Get ready to go to work. Go to work. Like you know. But maybe that's just like pandemic funk. Maybe we're just you know. Well, not really that. It's just that. Okay, so I guess technically I have a little bit more time. So I like I can actually do it like another game because it usually, especially during like the semester stuff, it's mostly schoolwork, schoolwork, and all this other stuff. And like the one or two hours that I do have for gaming, I don't want to like start something like with control which i still have like it's seven hours in and it's like a i believe 40 hour campaign it's like how am i going to finish that unless i actually dedicate some time to it yeah yeah doing like two hours every day kind of it spoils the mood and pacing of the game because sometimes it these things just you need to dedicate and do a chunk to and that i mean going into that it's not just even video games like er, so like i don't know if you know about like so even like my like board game campaigns like i have aether fields over here that i like did a late like pledge to which is another board game can board game campaign about dreaming and i done like the first two scenarios but it's like i don't have time to do this because to just do like two scenarios is about four to five hours yeah i it, i don't know maybe see my thought on it right is that maybe it's just pandemic funk maybe it's not the thing is, not too long ago, I was doing college, I was working full-time at the pizza place, I was doing other just random stuff, and I was gaming with, like, you know, the whole crew on Mondays or Saturdays, whenever we used to do it back then. So, I had, you know, I was using the time, so I just, I don't know if it's just this, like, weird lethargy, like, what's the lethargy, leth little bit, bit, words. Yeah. Yeah, words hard. Um, so I don't know. 
Like, I just, I think it's kind of pandemic funk, though, honestly. Like, because at the start, we did, what did we do? Krim and I, we did uh, Grand Blue Fantasy versus uh, single player co op stream. Uh, we streamed a couple other things too here and there. We were on here doing stuff. I've been doing Grand Blue stuff. Like, every time a guild event comes up, you know, I'm pitting the hours in. It's like, I have the time. I just, yeah, I don't know. I, I really do think it's just pandemic funk. I think it's just really set in at this point. Yeah, like, I, 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 well, I felt. I will say this, actually getting out last two weeks with you and gaming, I've it's definitely increased my like just my feelings about actually getting stuff done and trying. I'm still not like back to full pace, but I am getting stuff done, so Yeah, yeah. It's I mean that's also the same thing. It's like I had that terrain from when we played for a while and I knew I needed like larger line of sight blockers. It's just that I wasn't ever playing a game that required that so it's like eh, why yeah. why it's the same thing with me buying like all these other board games and it's like i <laughs> haven't gotten to play them with anybody so why should i even care well I, I, mean... guess, <laughs> I guess that also is it right there i guess that's why i bought a lot of these like solo player games mm-hmm. like these campaign narrative games like i even have like sleeping gods that i haven't I haven't even started. I, I only like I bought it months ago. Like in um, God, like three, four months ago, like February ish, and it was only like two weeks ago, which I even just cracked the plastic on it. Let alone actually read the rule book or anything with it. I feel that. I feel that. Like I said, I've, I've never had a pile of shame before and you people who know miniature games and stuff know what that is that's just a bunch of freaking unassembled box sets models oh, all kinds fuck, of yeah, stuff i have that i still haven't put this fucking i together. <laughs> i have never had a, i have never had a pile of shame before I and i now have a plastic have tote full right here i have a box from miniature market full of stuff I have a baking pan full of resin miniatures. I've got a bunch of Star Wars Legion proxies of Old Republic stuff sitting here on my desktop, along with a nebel warfer. I've got, you know, I just have a bunch of stuff like I just have not gotten to. I'm chipping away at it finally, but I've never had stuff pile up like this before. It It's terrible, and I don't like it. <laughs> well... Yeah, I mean, it's mostly, I mean, it's even worse. I still have, even have, like, it's, there's two steam, fitter, steam fitters for, like, Malifaux. I haven't, I still haven't put together one. I still need to put together one more Arc Trooper from that original Arc Trooper that I had. It's, yeah, it's, I need to do those because I'm probably going to lose them at this point if I just keep them laying around like that. And... Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, I I mean I just also need to reorganize my room too. Yeah, I gotta dedicate I guess next Wednesday at this point. I don't know how much we're gonna do tonight, but I do need to reorganize my uh my room and stuff probably next week. Uh but yeah, just overall so I just gotta get like some of this stuff cranked out. I've got freaking a Malifo crew, I got all the new vehicles for Legion coming in. I got, what else? Got some books I need to, like, put on the shelf. Like, should get to the shelf. Uh, I've got those Privateer Press mystery boxes, which, knowing my luck, will be two factions I already have, but who knows, whatever. The whole idea is for us to have, like, a slow grow thing and, you know, get to playing it again, because I've missed playing it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's just, I got all that stuff piling up, man. It, it sucks. You still didn't tell me who you got from Alpha. Oh, you're going to find out. And you're going to love it. Okay. <laughs> what? Anyway. So. Yeah. So. I don't know, man. That's. I think that's about it. Unless you got anything else you want to. No, that seems to be kinda good place. Go into right it. There. All right. Well, where can uh, where can people find you on the Internet? People find me on the internet right now. I don't have any social media that I am in a position in which to plug people with. Wow. Hopefully, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, I'll work on that. Okay. 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 
I guess we should actually tell what our actual format is we want to do for this. Uh, mostly this is going to be bi-weekly. Uh, this one and presumably a episode one will be out kind of back to back and then it'll be every two weeks at that point. Uh, really just going to do different topics. We'll probably alternate from board game talk to video game talk. Usually just genres like our thoughts, opinions, design, that sort of thing. Um, that's about it really. I mean as far as my pluggables go... Uh, you can find me DJ Fantasy on Twitter, uh, the official Death by pa uh, Death by Pegasus Twitter account, uh, Death by Pegasus on YouTube, where this podcast will go, and then you will be able to find us at Death by Podcast on Apple, Android Store, Google Play, whatever, uh, iHeart, all that stuff. I'll go ahead and set it up and get it out there. And yeah, I guess that's about it. That seems good. Bye-bye.